All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about a long requested topic. What kind of camera gear do I use? Uh, I've been getting this question more and more lately, so I figured we'd go over it as well as just some general tips and tricks for like automotive vlogging, just stuff I've learned over time. I'm by no means an expert, but I've definitely made a lot of mistakes. All right, first things first, let's talk about camera gear. So this is pretty much all my camera gear besides what I'm using, which we'll get to after this. We're kind of kind of start like here at the beginning and then work our way down. It's, it's not, you'll see, you'll see. All right, so this is kind of where it all started. It started with this right here. This is a Rebel T5i. So this is the setup I started with. Actually, I started with this lens and this lens. So this is the 18 to 55 kit lens. This is what a lot of these entry level DSLRs come with, just a very standard lens. This is one of those lenses that isn't really good at anything, but it works for a lot of things. Like it works mediocre for a lot of different things. So if you have it at 18 and you're holding it out here, it's still super close. It's like cropped down on your face. My battery charger doesn't work for this camera, otherwise I'd show you guys. If you zoom it all the way in, you're still kind of far away like you're still not really close enough to make it work so it's kind of like a meh lens and i also had this 55 200 which is nice because it'll get good far away stuff but it's terrible in low light so is this one they have really large apertures isn't very sharp it's like a cheap kit lens but it definitely works for getting far away stuff so then adam let me borrow this lens this is a tokina 11 to 16. i almost just dropped it sorry adam so this lens is really nice for vlogging because it's got the wide angle. So you've got it here and it's got all of me. The problem with this lens is one, as you can see, it's quite large, quite heavy. Um, and then there's the intrusion factor, which we'll get to at a later point in this video. But basically this setup with a mic on it just looks like a bit ridiculous. Like it just looks really intimidating and it's very, the form factor is not there. This is a big, heavy camera you end up just leaving it around places. You'll just leave it in the car while you go to hang out with everybody because you don't feel like carrying this and having like this whole massive assembly. So that brings me to this camera. This is a Canon G7X. Uh, I picked this up. The idea was it's a nice camera that I can take, stick in my pocket, and I won't miss the shot. If I'm out, I'm hanging out with everybody, we're chilling by a fire at a drift event, I can keep this in my pocket, I can shoot with it if I need to, I don't have to dedicate a whole arm to holding it. So this camera has what this one lacks in form factor. It is light, small, relatively inexpensive. I think I got this one for 450 bucks on Canon's website, refurbished. I think they're about 600 brand new. Um, but the picture on it's really solid. It's not super uncomfortable to hold. You can hold it like this, but there's two killers with this camera. One, obviously the lens is fixed. It's just got this telescoping lens built into the camera. The second part of that equation is that this is kind of the same thing as this 18 to 55. It works okay for a lot of things. So it'll work for most things you're gonna do, but just it's never gonna be good at any of them. So right now I'm holding the camera about a full arm's length away just to get just my head and you end up normally kind of holding it like this while you're walking around and you're talking and then you've got this just cropped in vision, version of the face and I can't really tell if I'm in focus or not but that's another thing it's it's not very good in my opinion auto focusing so not only that but you can zoom it's one of these like slow zooms But that's all you're ever gonna be able to get out of it optically. So that's as far as you can zoom. It's really shaky at the high end of the zoom range. But again, you can get pretty far with it. I mean, this isn't bad. You can zoom in pretty decently. You get a little bit of that like depth of field feel. Let's see if we can focus on that. Get a little bit of background blur. You have one of these little wind muffs and the audio is decent, but another big gripe with this camera for me is the audio not being able to add an external mic. From my experience, everything is just like a little too quiet. And even if you bump it up, it picks up so much of the background noise. So if you increase the volume of the clip, you're increasing all the background noise. If you're in a noisy environment, like the drift event with cars in the background, it's really difficult to understand what you're saying. Uh, and that was a big problem of mine. So that's why 
I wanted to go back to a camera that was more modular and that I could add an external mic to. So in comes my current setup. This is a Sony A6500. I've got the Sony 10 to 18 wide angle lens on here. Got a Rode Video Mic Go, I think. Uh, it's you don't have to power it uh, with a battery. It just runs off this cable itself. Uh, one of the killers to this is it doesn't have a flip out screen, but I've noticed the autofocus is so fast and good that I, I've never really had an issue with it being out of focus. I've had more issues with this camera being out of focus, which I can see myself. I just can't see myself in enough resolution to tell. Uh, so I've had more issues with this one being out of focus than this, and I can't ever see the screen on this. And with a wide angle lens like this, it's pretty easy to be in frame. Like it looks like I'm not even in frame right now, but I know that I most likely am. Like I'm, this is what I'm seeing. And I'm sure I'm still in frame. So it's very convenient. It's nice for holding it out. You know, you can get a really wide shot. Uh, if you want to hold your arm far away, you can hold it pretty close and still not get that crazy cropped effect. You can even zoom fully in and kind of get to the effect of the G7X. It's a really nice lens for vlogging. So while it is nice for vlogging, it doesn't have a major pitfall. You can't zoom in at all. Like, that's max zoom. That's as far as I can go. So if I'm at a drift event and I'm trying to film something far away, for example, there is the track. That's it. That's all I get. So now we have a lack of usability because that one's only work for so much. So in comes the only other ones I have for it right now, which is this Sony, does it even say anything on it? Uh, prime lens, it's a 1.8 aperture, 50 millimeter. Uh, basically what that means is it's got a large aperture. What that does two things, it helps in low light significantly because more light can come in. It also gives you the uh, effect of whatever's in focus, everything behind it being blurred out, which is a really nice like little cinematic look. It looks really nice, it's really easy to achieve. So for example, I can focus in on this camera and everything in the background is blurred. Or focus in on the welder, everything in the background is blurred. It gives a really nice aesthetic effect. But for contrast, this is the same place I just had the wide angle. Now let me try to get in frame here. Uh, you have a very small window of what's in frame. You've got to move the camera really far back, which means you need a nice, powerful mic. Um, so it definitely has its difficulties. But the fun part of that is you have to work around it being a prime lens and pick your location and your shot based off what the lens can do, which I think is a good skill to learn. Uh, I'm still pretty new to it, but I've enjoyed that aspect of it. It's also got a decent bit of zoom. The other drift car is right there. You can see them just fine. So that setup is what I'm currently using, but it definitely has its drawbacks. I mean, I spent so much time trying to find a good camera to buy. I wanted to reinvest into the channel, but I didn't want to get something so out of the scope of what's needed either. So I settled on this camera, and the camera itself has a couple pitfalls. One, the audio, I can't figure out how to adjust the audio levels. I don't know if I'm wrong or I just, I've looked for it and whatever. If you know how to adjust the audio levels, let me know in the comments below. What happens then is that the audio is peaky, but it changes throughout the clip, so the camera will auto adjust. So the beginning of a clip could be really loud, and then it will taper back down, and then it will go back up. So in one clip, I may have to adjust the audio level several times, and then that times like 100 clips in a video, it adds, I don't know, half an hour to an hour of work in editing the video. When, for example, the G7X is pretty much just the same across the board, like it's too quiet, but it's always kind of too quiet. So it's a lot easier to work with. You don't get this peakiness. I don't know if I need to try a mic where I can turn the gain down or what, but I haven't got that far yet. But otherwise, the only real downfalls of this particular setup is just the extra work involved. You know, I've got to carry a second lens around. It's a much bigger form factor. That also has that intrusive look to it that I was mentioning before. It just looks like a very serious camera. And if you look at this camera, if I go point this in your face, this is like my grandma's cell phone camera and I'm just taking digital pictures. So when you film people who don't really necessarily know what you're doing or why you're filming or whatever, they take it less seriously. Even people who know, it's just this little camera in your face 
as opposed to this big camera in your face. And people seem to take this a lot more seriously. You don't get as genuine of a reaction out of them I've seen and people kind of like, oh, what movie are you making? You know, they see the big wind muff and they just don't quite understand cameras. So they, they don't really know and it's not their fault. I used to think any camera that looked like this was a big expensive camera and this is like, this whole setup might cost you like 400 bucks used or something like that, 300 bucks. So with an actual vlogging camera, whether it be a cheap DSLR, T3i, T4i, T5i, T6i, uh, you know, entry level DSLR with a couple lenses, or just this simple G7X, or something expensive like this Sony a6500, they all have their pitfalls no matter how much money you spend. You could spend 10 grand on a camera and it still would not be perfect for vlogging. So you're gonna have to pick what's best for you. Um, for a beginner, I think the G7X is great. You can still get some cinematic shots from it. I used to do it all the time, where I do like the multi different shots, you know, me reaching for something and then zoomed in on me reaching for that and then zoomed back out or things like that. You can get a lot of cinematic style out of one of these cameras without having to carry around a bunch of different lenses and it's a lot more affordable, fits in your pocket. Battery life is terrible, but we'll get to that. So I will say all in all, like, I really like this camera and when I bought this camera I told myself I had gotten lazy with vlogging and I just started doing the whole like hold the camera, talk to it, point the camera, point at stuff and that had gotten old and I really wanted to get back into trying to make things more cinematic and putting more effort into the vlogs and the videos instead of just filming what's going on. So I told myself I reinvested in the channel by buying this nice camera setup, you know, two different lenses, which I, I still would like to collect a couple more lenses for different situations, you know, that I would get back into that cinematic style, which I really enjoyed filming and editing. I'm much more proud of the product than just pointing at stuff and filming it. Um, not knocking anybody who does that, it's just, I wanted to try to do more, I guess, and I, I just thoroughly enjoy doing more. Whether that equates to more views or not, it normally doesn't, but I like it. It makes me happier. So for me, this camera works out, but what, what camera might be right for you is a tough call. If you're unsure about it, start with a phone camera. It's gonna be very similar to the capabilities of this camera, just not quite as good. You can get a mic for them, and you'll probably have almost better video quality just because you'll have like proper shotgun mic audio. Um, that's what I would suggest if you do want to buy a camera, G7X is probably a really good choice. If you end up not vlogging, you've still got a really nice still camera for the price and what it is. But I mean, you can still go a long way with this. I mean, Roman Atwood still uses this camera. Adam uses this camera. I think they both have the Mark II, but same basic thing. So don't think you're going to be limited by that. Just start out and then you'll figure out what you need. No sense in buying a big fancy camera and then using it just to walk around and vlog because it's gonna just be harder for you to do that. Okay, so next up, real quick, accessories. Um, you guys have all seen these Joby tripods. I broke this one. Uh, where is it? Yeah, that leg's missing stuff. Got this one. Uh, these are okay. They kind of suck, but there's not really a good alternative and they're expensive, they're like 50 bucks. This little Manfrotto one works great for like a G7X. You can prop it up, press this button, and like move it to whatever angle you want. It'll stay there. Sits flat on stuff. Good for holding and filming. Really solid little setup. This is pretty much what I used for a good majority of the time on this channel until I got this camera. So then batteries. Batteries are going to be your best friend, especially with the G7X. Battery life is not ideal. You're going to want handful of batteries. I always buy the knockoff brands. I don't buy replacements of, you know, the Canon brand. They're like way more expensive. Sony, I've heard it's bad on battery life. Seems to be decent. I haven't had too many issues. Nothing like the G7X. And then, oh, I didn't even talk about GoPros. GoPros. If you're doing any sort of action sport, these are very important. Uh, I had this Hero 3 that worked just fine. Um, the image was a little meh on it. So I got this Hero 5, which I thought was gonna be great and awesome. Because it's got telemetry and all this stuff, and uh, in my experience, I've never got the telemetry to work right. It always just reads all over the place. The GPS map is like a squiggly line, and then it'll say I'm going 120 as I'm decelerating from like 60, and then jump down to like 10, and then accelerate to like 100. I've never got it to feel or seem accurate, and that was like the only reason I bought this camera and you have to add it in and like GoPro's QuickTime app, which I really don't like. So I wouldn't suggest getting the five, I don't know how the six is, 
I would suggest getting like the four silver with the screen. The screen is super useful. Like if you're setting this up on your car, you can quickly see if something's in frame or not, which you pretty, these are pretty generous being wide angle as to what's gonna be in frame, but it's nice to be able to tell. So as far as GoPros go, pretty much the more the merrier. You can put them in multiple locations and clip between the two. It's always nice to get multiple angles on stuff. Um, but as with the Canon, bring a bunch of batteries. You don't want to go to an event and get just warmed up and then your GoPro's dying. And it's one of those things you leave just kind of on all the time as you're recording. So the batteries do die very quick. So that's pretty much it for the camera equipment. Oh, also SD cards. Everyone thinks this is a grinder in my videos. I don't smoke weed. I don't know how many times I have to tell you guys that. This is a SD card holder that I 3D printed. In my experience, spring for the right SD cards, I really like these, knock on wood. Well, this is actually metal, but knock on wood. Hold on. You have to have an issue with these, but every other SD card I've owned, I've had them fail on me and I've lost footage. I normally get the 64s. It's big enough to hold any day or two's worth of footage, but not so big that you end up putting a week's worth of footage on it, and then if it crashes, you lost a week's worth of footage. Um, and also, if you lose it, it's not the end of the world. Better off having multiple 64s as opposed to like one 256 or whatever. And you generally want a holder. I'll try to remember to put the link to this below if you have a friend with a 3D printer. I really like it. It's a really nice setup and it costs like 10 cents to make. So now that the camera stuff's out of the way, let's move on to a couple of little tips and tricks. So if you're doing automotive vlogging, a lot of times what's going to be more important than your camera, I mean you could be using a phone camera and get better results than using this Sony, for example, because that lens is not very good in low light if you don't have proper lighting. This is something I finally invested in myself, but I mean, these lights were like 50 bucks on Amazon. The video of them is down below. No affiliation with them, just an Amazon buy, and I like them. They're very nice. They make a drastic difference because if you're using low light, you're gonna either, like with this camera, you compensate with ISO, but then it looks grainy, or if you have a good low light camera, it's still working really hard, and you don't have a lot of leeway to do other things because you're using like kind of like all what the camera can do to get the picture at all. So when you have nice light, it just makes everything better, and it's gonna make the look of everything better. It's gonna give it like a better feel to it, and just make it overall easier to do your job of working on your car while filming. And then obviously it makes working on your car way easier because you have light. So the last thing I want to talk about here as far as tips and tricks for becoming an automotive vlogger, YouTuber, or whatever you want to call it, there's just some general things you can use to help get started. So when you start out, don't focus so much on figuring out your own original style because everyone's going to say, oh, you copied this person, you copied that person. They're going to say that no matter what you do. Watch videos, watch different channels and see what you like, see what you enjoy seeing, if you enjoy the raw vlog atmosphere, because that's like really as reality as it gets, then start doing that. Or if you enjoy like, you know, the Casey Neistat style, where there's a lot of effort put into filming and the camera moving around and things like that, try to start out with something like that. Don't just step by step replicate what somebody else is doing. If you're a Casey Neistat copy and you're just doing exactly what he does step by step, you're just basically value brand Casey Neistat, people are just gonna watch the original thing. But if you take Casey Neistat style and say, oh, I really like how he moves the camera multiple times throughout a video like that, I'm gonna try that. And don't get too bogged down in making an amazing video when you're starting, especially. Like this video, for example, I'm really more concerned with getting you guys the information than I am with making it super aesthetically pleasing. I could try to make it a lot better by moving the camera around a bunch, but what happens then is I'm so focused on where do I move the camera next to keep this shot moving and interesting that I miss out on what I'm trying to tell you guys because my brain is so focused on the filming aspect and not the story aspect. And that's always going to depend, you know? The story may come first in some, the filming may come first in the others, but the biggest advice I can give you is just get out there and try it. I spent so much time before I made my first video on what it was going to be, what I was going to do, how I was going to film it, how I was going to edit it, all this stuff. And it took me a while to make my first video. And then as soon as I made the second one, I was like, gosh, that first video was trash. What was I thinking? And then as soon as I made the third one, I was like, oh, that second video is trash. You're going to learn every time you make a video 
what you don't like and what you do like and it'll come from experience i mean the best way to learn a skill is just practice and you may start out as a kci stack copy or adam lc copy but you'll morph that into your own style but you're going to take inspiration from somewhere so don't feel ashamed in watching someone else's videos and going i like this i want to try to do this my own way because there's nothing wrong with that all right so that's going to be it for this video I hope that any of you guys who want to know what kind of camera stuff I use, now you know. If you had any questions, hopefully they were answered. If not, ask them below. Um, I'm sure people in the comments can help you out, and I will try my best to answer them. Just remember the equipment is nowhere near important as the operator. There's someone out there who can make a better iPhone video than I could make with a RED. I mean, a lot of this is going to come from practice and time, so don't get so focused on waiting until you can buy the most expensive camera. Get something to start with start doing it practice 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 and if you move on sell the camera i mean for example i could probably sell this rebel t5i with my two lenses for maybe 100 bucks 50 bucks less than what i bought it for cameras hold their value pretty well or start with your iphone everyone has an iphone i mean aaron from lone star drift films most of his travel vlogs on an iphone and he has a bunch of nice cameras again the important thing is you the user getting out there trying it learning and developing your own style and figuring out yourself what works and what doesn't. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I will see you next time with a regularly scheduled uh, vlog of working on these many, many cars that I have. Here.